Will Smith apologizes inside Warner Brothers' shocking decision to yank Batgirl. There's some new drama brewing at The View with two new co-hosts. Plus, we're talking about Brad Pitt. All that is coming up on The Take. Hey everyone and welcome to The Take. I'm Elizabeth Wagmeister. As you see, Clayton is out today, but we are so lucky we have a very special guest, our very own Mark Malkin, senior editor and columnist and host of the Just for Variety podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We have a lot to talk about. I feel like you have been on a red carpet every night, which is pretty typical for you, <laughs> but I did see you were hanging out with Brad Pitt this week. I was. I have a lot of questions for you. We will get to that. <laughs> but first, unless you've been living under a rock, the big story of the week that everybody is talking about is Batgirl. The surprising news from Warner Brothers to completely yank the film has sent shockwaves through the industry. People are confused. They're upset as to why Batgirl, which stars Leslie Grace, will not be seen theatrically or HBO Max, which it was originally developed for. Now, of course, this is a product of the mega merger, the $43 billion merger between Warner Media and Discovery. And as HBO Max and Discovery Plus, that streaming strategy is in play, it seems that Batgirl did not survive. Now, we have to give a shout out to our colleagues, Adam Vary and Brent Lang. They've done great reporting on this. It seems that this all came down to money and taxes. But still, the optics of this, to completely cancel Batgirl, which is, of course, a female-led superhero movie, I don't get this. A Latina. Yes. Led superhero movie. It really, everyone is just shocked. You know, I have interviewed Leslie Grace many times before they started shooting, after they started shooting. The last time I spoke to her was right after they completed principal photography on Batgirl. And she said they were already talking about what they could do in the sequel. Mm. That there are so many themes. She was so excited to be looking at the dailies. This was a 90 to $100 million movie that they are shelving. And like you said, it comes down to money. And listen, in Hollywood, it all comes down to money. How much money can you make me? How much money can you save me? Mm -hmm. And here, it's, you know, Warner Brothers says it's cheaper. It's better for them financially to just get rid of the movie mm -hmm. completely. You never hear of this. Just I just makes no sense. Right, it really is unprecedented. And to your point, the original budget was 75 million. Then with COVID expenses, it ended up being around 90. Now to market the film globally, that right. could have been between 30 and 50 million. But still, to just say it's a wash, $90 million down the drain, even if it saves us some money, as you said, it's just shocking. It, it really makes no sense. I don't think that this is going to be the end of this story. No. This has brought <laughs> on some very unexpected press, and now everybody is saying, well, now we really want to see the yeah. film. I mean, the new hashtag trend is going to be either release Batgirl, uh -huh. free Batgirl, mm -hmm. we want to see Batgirl. <laughs> the cynical part of me says, well, maybe Warner Brothers did this on purpose to even increase <laughs> you know, uh, attention on it. So. Guess what? Let's say next week Warner Brothers says, you know what? We made a mistake. We're going to release it. You're going to have so many more people watching Batgirl than they had originally intended. But like to your point, this is not the last of this. This is just bad optics. And I think Warner Brothers has some explaining to do. Let's move on to another big story. It seems like just yesterday, but it also seems like a very long time ago that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars. Well, that was actually four months ago, and four months later, we got an apology video from Will Smith. This has everybody talking, lots of reactions. Some people saying they are happy that Will Smith has taken his time to heal. He said in the video that he reached out to Chris Rock. Chris Rock isn't ready to talk, but when he is, Will says he would like to talk to him. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you have a lot of people saying, too little, too late, the damage is done. Now, I have my take on this, and it's a pretty strong take, but I'd love to hear, what do you think about this video? Do you think it helps Will or does it hurt him? I think it's sort of a no-win situation mm -hmm. for Will. I think, you know, great, he apologized. But like you said, it's four months later. Why did it take so long? It takes so long because guess what? Will Smith has a team around him and everyone's trying to figure out what's the best strategy. He has other projects. How do we promote the other projects mm -hmm. but also deal with this? To hear that Chris Rock doesn't even want to talk to him 
it seems like, okay, so then why should we want to hear from you? Mm -hmm. That said, he's being a man and he's taking responsibility for mm -hmm. what he did. So you have to give someone credit for that for sure. Mm -hmm. I wish he would have taken you know, that apology tour earlier. You know, I was there at the Vanity Fair party the night that he slapped Chris Rock. He was not feeling sorry that night. Nope. He was celebrating, he was having a good time. I do understand that it happened. You know, he was doing that right after this incident happened and everyone didn't know what was going on. Um, but four months later, seems like a long time. Right, I completely agree. And that night, we all remember the videos that you were posting, that he was dancing, holding his Oscar loud and proud. He was dancing to his own music. Didn't seem too remorseful. And I just think four months in this is what we get. It's a self-produced interview, you know. He <laughs> came up with his own questions. There were no surprises. I think if you are really ready in a public forum, which unfortunately he has to do because he works in the public industry, if you're really ready to make amends, I think he should have sat down for an interview that wasn't self-designed. That way he could have been held accountable yeah. to some tougher questions. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but there seemed to be some self-promotional branding in that. He was wearing a hat that had a W, which is the logo for his own production company. This just felt like a miss for me. Like you said, I think the damage is already done. That's an understatement, but it's Will Smith. He's obviously going to work again. He's one yeah. of the greatest and biggest movie stars of all time. This is not the last we've seen of him, but... He has more apologizing to do, and it'll be up to the fans, as always. Do they want to run to theaters? Do they want to spend their money on tickets to see Will Smith, or are they done with him? I think they will run to the theaters to see him. I yeah. don't think he's done. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he's done. All right, moving on to another story, more drama brewing in the media world. This week, The View announced that they have brought on two new co-hosts. Anna Navarro, who has been on the show for years, is now officially a co-host. And also former Trump staffer Alyssa Farrah Griffin is going to be filling the conservative seat on the panel. Of course, that seat has been vacant ever since Meghan McCain left in 2021. Now, I broke the news that Alyssa Farrah Griffin was going to be joining the show. We also broke the news this week that Sunny Hostin has signed a multi-year deal. So she'll be continuing on. Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg all signed to long-term deals, clearly signaling that they're keeping them through the 2024 election, which is when ratings will surge. They surged the last election cycle. Now, a lot of the controversy and criticism coming up is for Alyssa Farrah Griffin. She formerly was the top spokesperson for former President Donald Trump, and then she left the White House after Joe Biden won. Now, she has turned the tables, and she is now no fan of Trump. She says that after the January 6th insurrection that her opinion completely changed. But you have a lot of people in the Trump base and his fans, you know, who are saying, She's a traitor. And then you're having some other people who are saying, well, she's human and, and maybe she's learned. So what do you think? Good for ratings, good decision, bad decision. Great for ratings, good. We're talking about it. This is the view playbook. Mm -hmm. This is let's get those polarizing views in. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens if Alyssa starts bashing Trump. You're going to have someone like a Whoopi Goldberg who's going to say, but you were in the White House with him. So it took you this long to realize he was that long? Where was the turn? Where was the real turning point for mm -hmm. you? Anna is sort of that moderate voice mm -hmm. in between them. But Anna does not, she's not gonna put up with any of the Trumpism stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be interesting to see if they eat Alyssa alive. Mm -hmm. And if they do eat Alyssa alive, they still got Anna there. Right, and they still, have ratings, but right. you know, I think a lot of the criticism comes from people saying that she kind of changed her tune right. as she yeah. was approaching a television career. A lot of people have also seen, they're saying, if The View wants to have a Trump conservative, have a Trump conservative, have someone like right. Kimberly Guilfoyle on there. But I, right, no, I really have seen that. No, <laughs> but, but truly, you know, yeah. people are saying, if you're going to do it, just go all the way. But if you look historically, the last person in that seat was Megan McCain. No one hated Trump more than Meghan McCain. So I think if you're going for the viewers, Trump lovers are not watching The, the View. They might no. be hate watching The View. I don't, even think, I don't even think they're hate watching On it. Twitter, that's it. Yeah, you know, that's the, the I, clips. Yes. So if you're going to the base that's watching The View, it's very important to have all perspectives. But for the Republican perspective, it's probably a Trump hating perspective. Historically, that's right. 
what has done well. But let's move on to a more fun topic. We <laughs> mentioned up top that Mark was hanging out with none other than Brad Pitt this week. You were on the carpet at the premiere of Bullet Train. Now, Brad has been making a lot of headlines for all the right reasons. He is having <laughs> so much fun on this press tour in Berlin. We saw that he was wearing a skirt. Lots said about that. I know that we were loving it, and I know that you asked him about it. What was the inspiration? I don't know. I, like, we're all going to die, so let's like mess it up, you know? It's so good. You know, it, it's been really interesting to see the reaction to what Brad said to me about the skirt. I think one headline was like, his shocking explanation. I'm like, it's not that shocking. And I do love this attitude of like, we're all going to die. Let's just, basically he said, let's just have some fun. It's sort of like every time I take another carb or a pint of ice cream, I'm like, we're all going to die. Let's just do it. You know, and it was Brad Pitt saying, you know what? I want to wear a skirt. I'm going to wear a skirt. I'm going to show off my tattoos good for him when you see him on this press tour he's having so much fun and this is the kind of movie you should be having fun with because the movie is so outrageously fun so good for brad pitt like he was wearing a green suit the night that i talked to him it was a great green suit i agree and i mean he's been in this industry for so long under so much scrutiny as a public mm -hmm. figure a lot of his life has played out in the tabloids but he is a great actor and i love he's never really taken himself too seriously no. as big as he's been the biggest heartthrob, the biggest star, he's always just had fun with it. So I think it's really great to see in this act of his life and his career that he's just living life. Yeah, I love, when I said to him, I said, you know, you must have really wanted to do all the stunt work in Bullet Train because it's all stunt work. Mm -hmm. it's all fun. He's like, no. He's <laughs> like, uh, I've done that. I love stunt people. I walked off set too many days ago. I'm like, ah, you know, and he did that old man walk. So exactly what you said, he's not taking himself too seriously and that's what you have to do. And you have to have fun. Well, I can't wait to see it. Bullet Train comes out this weekend. And I just have to say, you always get the best interviews. Every celebrity loves talking to you <laughs> on the red carpet. You guys know him. You love him. Our red carpet <laughs> guru, Mark Malkin. Thank you for being here. This Thanks was so much fun. Me. Of course, Clayton, we miss you. We will see you back next week. And we will see all of you back next week right here on The Take. Thanks for watching The Take.